Welcome to Conversations with the Black Girl Blogger podcast, where you will hear amazing human interest stories from everyday people. They will inspire you, they will encourage you, and they will help you to overcome all of what you are going through in your life. I am your host, Aisha Morgan, and let's meet today's guest. Welcome, everybody. So we are here. Um, Hopefully y'all are watching on YouTube. Today's episode is going to be an actual live recording, not live recording, but you'll see my actual face um, on YouTube. If not, hello to everybody that is on all of our streaming platforms. Um, I do want to let you guys know that today's episode is about pregnancy loss. So if this is a topic that is sensitive for you, I am more than um, understanding of you skipping this episode. So um, I do want to preface the episode by saying that um, I wanted to do an episode about abortion because of everything that's happening in Texas. And I had a physician lined up. I had two people who had experienced abortion signed up um, who I knew would talk about their experience. And then I listened to an episode of Small Doses with Amanda Seals, and she announced that um, this month, October, is Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. And so I was like, okay, I can do an episode about that as opposed to doing the episode about abortion right now. So I turned, I had to get out of my car. um, So I didn't finish the episode after she did the intro. And I made a list of people who I knew who had experienced pregnancy loss or infant loss. And I don't know, like I just, I didn't really feel right asking them to do an episode Um, Because it is like reliving what happened to you. And so then I'm like, okay, on two of the episodes, we talked about pregnancy loss. So I will piece those episodes together and then give an intro and play those two episodes combined into one episode. And so I get back in my car, finish listening to the episode, and Amanda Seals talks about her pregnancy loss. And no one knew she was pregnant, you know, as far as the, um, her fans and the public. Um, But she went through everything that happened to her um, during her pregnancy loss. And I kind of just was like, duh. I've experienced very similar things that she experienced as she was talking And so I was like, well, I can just tell my experience. Um, If you've read any of my blogs or listened to our earlier episodes, every once in a while, you'll hear me mention um, the fact that I lost a child. And it's very brief um, because I like for my episodes to be about my guests and not about myself, Um, even though sometimes like I will interject and kind of tell things about myself um, that go along with their story, but I haven't really talked about my experience uh, with pregnancy loss. And so here we are. Um, October, like I said, October is Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. And so I'm going to tell you guys my story of how I've found out that I lost a baby. Um, So with my ex-husband, we were engaged and I decided that in talking to my sister that I should probably try to have a baby to see if I could. I had never been pregnant ever in my life. Um, And so we were actively trying to have a baby um, just so that I would have time if I wasn't able to get pregnant, then I could go to my doctor and get some different options if I needed to. And so maybe two or three months, two, three, four months we were trying. I don't, I really don't remember. Um, but 
I was tracking my periods and my um, ovulation on an app. And lo and behold, I found out that I was pregnant. I had missed my period. I took a test, called my doctor, and I couldn't get an appointment until I was seven or eight weeks, something like that, six, seven or eight weeks. And so just the anticipation was killing me. So I ended up going to a clinic. Um, and I'm not sure if it was an abortion clinic, but, um, they gave me all of my options. We took the pregnancy test. She told me that I was pregnant. Um, again, she went over my options, um, talked about the aftercare that they provide, um, at their clinic. And, um, then we prayed. She prayed that God would guide me in the direction to making the right decision. And that was it. And then I left and she followed up with me a couple of days later just to see how I was doing, to see what decisions that I had made um, regarding my pregnancy. I told her that I was planning on keeping it um, and that if I needed anything, I would reach out to her. Sorry if you're on YouTube, but my hair is kind of doing its own thing right now. Um, but so then from there, um, I waited till I was eight weeks and went to the doctor. And they just kept saying to me, like, are you sure that was the last date of your period? Um, like, yes, I'm sure. They did the ultrasound kept asking me the same questions. Like, are you sure that this was the last day of your period? I'm like, yes, I'm sure. So the doctor comes in and she's like, are you sure that was the last day of your period? I'm like, yes, I'm sure. And so she's like, well, this happens. Like, this is your first pregnancy. Um, you know, we have to just go with what your body is doing. So let's wait two weeks. Come back in two weeks and we'll see if you're measuring at eight weeks by that point. So I'm like, okay. During the next two weeks, I just, I don't know, like something in me just didn't feel right. Um, I'd never been pregnant, so I wasn't really sure what I should experience, but I just didn't feel confident that everything was okay. Um, part of it because of how they acted at my first appointment and then part of it I just all of a sudden just kind of felt different I can't really explain it um, I just felt different and I kind of knew something was wrong I didn't know what the something was but I just knew it was something so when I went back two weeks later and the doctor and well, actually the nurse um, confirmed the last day of my period again, um, did the ultrasound. She asked me again and I knew something was wrong at that point. Um, the doctor comes in, she's looking and she says like, are you sure again <laughs> that that was the last day of your period? And I'm like, yes, I'm sure. And honestly, I didn't think I lost the baby. I'm just going to be honest. I just thought it was something wrong, but not that it wasn't still alive. Like you just have this feeling that it's something, but you really don't know what the something is. And so she said, um, your baby did not survive. Um, you should be measuring more than <clears throat> five weeks and you're measuring only at five weeks. Um, and so your baby did not survive. So she said, I have to have another doctor come in to confirm what I'm saying. Are you okay with that? I said, yes. So the second doctor comes in and she looks and she immediately apologizes to me and confirms that I had a miscarriage. And so the doctor says, you know, let me, I will give you a minute. Um, 
you know, for, for you to get yourself together and, um, so the doctor says, I will give you a minute to get yourself together. Um, you know, I know this is a lot to process. I'll, I'll give you two a minute because at the point, at that point, my ex-husband was in there for both appointments. And this is where everything went left to me. Um, I'm sitting there crying on the table and he's just like, man, I've never experienced this before. You know, I have three kids, so I don't even know how to take this. Like, I don't even know how to react to this. And me laying there in shock that I lost this baby um, for about the next two to three minutes, he proceeds to talk about himself. And he asked me how I was doing. Are you okay? After his two to three minute rant. And then everything just disappointment. Disappointment came over me. I stopped crying. I got up and I'm like, we got to go see what the doctor has to say now. Um, that was really hard to have this happen to you. And within seconds of finding out the person who was supposed to be your support is having a pity party for themselves. And pretty much you are not even a factor in the conversation that he's having about himself. And we get into the doctor's office, into her actual office office, and she goes over our options. You know, you can have a DNC. Um, you can have it here in the hospital, or you can allow the baby to just pass. You're at a risk factors. You could possibly have an infection if you let it pass. Um, other things could also happen. I chose the DNC because just the thought of my baby just passing through me in some random place just did not sit well with me. Um, so. I scheduled the DNC. The earliest that I could do it was the Friday before my wedding. And I got married on a Tuesday or Wednesday. And that Friday before, I had the DNC. So I go in and go to the hospital super early. And the intake nurse who does like your billing and all that stuff, um, says, okay, you're here for your abortion. And I was like, no, I'm not here for an abortion. I'm getting a DNC. He's like, same thing. Uh, let me see your insurance and kind of going through all the things. And I'm looking at him like, why did she just say I was having an abortion? Like, I'm not. Um, then we go upstairs, check into our floor. And the next nurse says, Okay, you're here for your abortion. No, I'm here for a DNC. Oh, okay. You can have a seat and the intake nurse will come get you. So at this point, <clears throat> I'm pretty upset. Um, two people have said that I was having an abortion. And at this point, in my mind, an abortion is when someone gets rid of a baby that they don't want. That's my thinking. That's what an abortion is. When you don't want a baby, you have an abortion. So clearly I was ignorant to what an abortion was um, at that time, but you know, you live and you learn. So I go to the upstairs or I go back. So I go back with the intake nurse and he is very nice, calm, you know, very calm, 
Um, and out of nowhere, he says, you know, I don't know how women deal with this repeatedly. And I'm like, deal with what? He's like, miscarriages. Uh, my wife has had five before having our first child. And then two more miscarriages before having our second child. And so I was like, wow, like, I can't imagine, you know, and he kind of tells me some of those were early and a couple of them were later, like six months and plus. Um, one, she actually had to deliver because of how far along she was. And he put me at ease um, in the time where I was getting upset. And so I asked him, I said, why do they keep saying that I'm having an abortion when I'm having a DNC? And he said, well, medically, it's the same thing. Like uh, the baby is being removed from your body. DNC is the technical term, or sorry, is the layman's term, the technical term, you're having an abortion. So for billing, you're having an abortion. For procedure, in the hospital, you're having an abortion. Um, and he said, I know, you know, you have that stigma of what an abortion is um, based off of what you hear and see, probably from TV, but he's like, no, like, it's okay. Like you're having an abortion. Yes, you did not conceive, but um, you, you're having an abortion. So I was able to calm down, like talking to him, which was extremely helpful um, because I was feeling very anxious at that time um, because in my mind, like I'm not having an abortion. Like, how could you say that? I, my baby is not alive right now. So I wanted it. I wanted to keep this baby. I wanted to keep this baby. I didn't want to have an abortion it is not alive. So I'm glad that he was there to put me at ease and calm me down. So I had the procedure. Um, you wait for your vitals and everything. And they uh, want to see how you respond after the anesthesia is wearing off and all that. Um, and so I think I was there for a couple hours, maybe. And then I went home. So same day in and out. Um, get down in the car. My ex-husband was there and he's like, are you okay? I'm like, no, like, <laughs> no, I'm not okay. Like I was pregnant and now I am not. Um, but I have one job and that was to house and care for this child. And I couldn't even do that one job. That is what women are made to do. We are child bearers and I failed. And he was very apologetic um, and then turned it back to himself. I'm not even going to go into all of what he said about his experience, um, but I just the disappointment was growing more and more and more. And I um, get home, I lay in bed, and this is, again, the Friday before my wedding. And he says, we have to go get my kids tonight, which I think it was like an eight-hour drive there and an eight-hour drive back. And so I'm like, we? It's like, yeah, there's no way that I could stay up that whole time. So... You can start driving there and then I'll drive back. And just the disregard for what I had just been through was astonishing. I can't even put words to how I felt. And we went, we drove 16 hours after I just had a miscarriage and an abortion, I'm in a car for 16 hours. So we get home, 
immediately I go to sleep. Um, the next day I'm laying in bed, exhausted, emotionally and physically, mentally, just exhausted. And he comes in the room, I guess he went and maybe made the kids breakfast, I'm not sure. And he says, you're not doing this. You are not going to be depressed and lay in bed all day. I'm not going to allow that. Like, you need to snap out of it and get up and not be in this state that you're in. And I'm like, what? Like, in my head, I'm like, do I not ever? Like, you have given me zero minutes to process what the hell just happened to me none and then the fact that I'm now taking the time to think about it the next morning you are pretty much chastising me and telling me to snap out of it as if I don't know I just lost a track meet no I just lost a baby like are you crazy that was the response from him the next day. So I tell him to get out of my face and leave me alone. So his response was to send the kids in to the bedroom and they come in, daddy said you're sad and you need a hug. And I give them a hug and they, I say thank you and they walk out the bedroom and I just start crying like why can't I grieve what just happened like the loss of my kid that I I don't get to hug my kid and he comes in and says you need to worry about the kids that are here not the one that is not And y'all, that hurt me so bad, like so bad because it was selfish and like, who does that? If you don't understand how it feels to lose a kid because you never experienced it, don't tell someone else how to deal with losing their child. And I hear the kids like calling my name and telling me they want me to come into the living room. And no lie, that was the beginning and the end of me grieving the loss of my baby. And I knew from there I did not want to get married. I didn't. Um, to have someone totally disregard my feelings for something that was as traumatic as that, um, I knew I didn't want to get married. And throughout that weekend, you know, we were doing things with the girls and with his kids. And they were a, some kind of a shining light, I guess you could say. Um, when they found out we were getting married, they were so excited and so happy and talking about like, oh, you know, should we keep calling you Miss Aisha? Should we call you mom? Like, you know, and it was just like devastating. It was devastating. The entire weekend was devastating. And on my wedding day, um, again, the Wednesday after I had an abortion and a miscarriage, um, I procrastinated with Gia, my makeup artist and my friend 
because I didn't want to get married. I didn't. I did not want to get married. And there were other reasons why I didn't want to get married. But I think that that was the the breaking point for me. And I was just going through the motions. Not just in my marriage. Because I ended up going through with the wedding. Um, But I was just going through the motions in my life, period. Like, it wasn't until... I decided to get a divorce and go to therapy that I realized one of the reasons I felt the way I did was because I was depressed for two years, a year and a half, just depressed because I wasn't given permission to grieve the loss of a baby that I never had a chance to meet. And I guess like, because people don't really talk about it, you kind of feel selfish trying to talk to other people, especially when you know people who have lost their baby way later in their pregnancy. And you kind of feel like, your loss was not that big of a deal compared to theirs. Um, and you feel guilty talking to them. I did. I felt guilty talking about it to people. Um, and so I did it. And when I went to therapy, my therapist and I talked about something. I don't even remember how we got on the topic. And I told her that I lost a baby and somehow or another, I don't know if it was like Mother's Day or something was coming up. And she said, like, you have to stop thinking that you are not a mom because you're a mom. You lost a baby, so you're a mom. And when she said it, like, I just broke down, like, I broke down because she was the first person that acknowledged that I was a mom. And for all of my family and my friends, like, please don't feel like you did anything wrong by not um, not doing more. Uh, you know, it's hard to know how to help someone through something like that. And yeah. When she told me that I need to keep acknowledging that I'm a mom, that was like a big deal because he made it seem like I wasn't. He made it seem like the baby that I lost wasn't a baby, like... It wasn't important and I shouldn't feel the way I felt because I didn't have it and it was terrible y'all it was so bad it was so bad and I was just so depressed so depressed like I can't even tell you like when the depression started um but I was so sad inside like I was so sad and 
and it was so hard just to like be just to exist and you know one day one of my athletes made a comment about me just being so angry for nothing and snapping at them for nothing and I said something to another coach like she's sitting there saying that I'm snapping but they need to stop doing what they're doing and he said you are overreacting and in that moment, uh, my drive on my drive home from work, I had to like have a. I had to analyze like myself, and really like evaluate like what I have become, how I have was feeling and over the course of this time the baby was the first thing but things were just happening in that marriage that just took me out um on all cylinders physically emotionally mentally physically I was not abused please don't think that um but my depression I was not taking care of myself I'm just gonna call it what it was I was not taking care of myself and it was kind of one of the reasons why I started at Dr. Sebi um because I just felt terrible and now you know after going to therapy you know it had nothing to do with uh just me having bad habits I was grieving the loss of my child and it was it was just I can't even really put it into words how I felt um it was just a really tough tough time and I guess I just felt empty like I felt like something was missing I was functioning, I was social when I needed to be social, talking to my family as if it was just another day and not realizing that um, I just needed to talk to somebody and talking to that therapist was amazing. Um... You know, she she made me think about things in that moment and pull out of feelings and pull out emotions and pull out fears. And I was able to like articulate how I felt um, through that process. And I was able to tell someone how hurt I was and disappointed in my ex-husband's response to me losing this baby and it was so refreshing it felt great um but you know in the end I ended up getting a divorce and maybe another day y'all I will talk about the rise and fall of my marriage, but, um, yeah, that happened to me, and it was not a lifetime movie, it was my actual life, and that was a really dark time in my life, but, um, from that, I was in fear, when I found out I was pregnant with Kingsley and I had expressed my concerns to, with, you know, to Jamel. Um, he was extremely supportive and very reassuring. Um, he didn't know how my ex-husband responded at that point. I did end up telling him later, um, but he was the polar opposite. I mean, 
just very comforting, very supportive, very loving, very much so excited. Uh, and <clears throat> it was a breath of fresh air to have a partner who was supportive, um, helped me stay positive throughout the process. And we got over that first trimester hump. Um, I felt like I had made it because I didn't get there the first time and it felt good. It really felt good to have that support, but yeah, it is very hard to lose a child. It doesn't matter at what point you lose a child. As my therapist said, you are a mother, whether you were pregnant for a day for years um obviously you wouldn't be pregnant for years but if you had years with your child or if you lost your child during some point of your pregnancy you're a mom and you need to grieve the loss of that baby just like a mom who delivered a baby and grieves the loss of it um it's okay to talk about it you know I don't really talk about it, um, but it is okay to talk about it. And sometimes I'll mention it to people that I had a miscarriage, um, but I don't go into details about the whole ordeal. Um, so I did want to just get it out there. And I felt like this month was the perfect time, um, you know, Go to therapy if you've experienced a miscarriage. Um, find somebody to talk to. Please don't feel like you're being selfish because you had your baby for a short time or a long time. Uh, maybe you made it all the way. Maybe you delivered your baby. Maybe your baby is like not a baby, but a toddler and you lost. You're a mom no matter where you fit on the timeline and grieve that child like you would any other child. So I hope that um, my story encourages someone to talk about their story and their loss with miscarriages um, because I think that when I made my list of people who had lost children a lot of them were early pregnancies and even though I knew that they had experienced the loss we never really went into depth on how emotionally and mentally and physically um it took a toll on them and so I think that's the important part you know it's one thing to talk about loss um whether it be early on in your pregnancy, late, or infant loss. But um, talking about the emotional side of it is important as well um, because it lets people know that they're not alone. And part of it was I felt like I was alone. Like no one had talked to me about having a miscarriage, um, experiencing loss, and so... I didn't know how to process it. I didn't know how to deal with it. And then not having a support system at home um, with my ex-husband made it even harder. So please take care of yourselves. Um, I pray for all of you who have experienced any kind of loss of a child. Um, you will be okay. We will be okay. Please continue to meditate and pray and honor your child um they know that you love them and now you just have an angel watching over you or angels um for some but you'll be okay we will be okay and i pray that you Find a great support system that you open up to your families and express how you are feeling um, so that you're not alone. 
All right, y'all. And that's a wrap on another amazing episode. I know that you were just as inspired as I was after listening to that conversation. And to let us know how we're doing, don't forget to leave us a review, like, share, and follow the podcast. Also, make sure you follow us on all social media platforms at The Black Girl Blogger and check out our website, www.theblackgirlblogger.com. And the most important step, make sure you share the podcast with someone you know and tell them to share with someone they know. And if you know someone who has an amazing story to tell or if you yourself would love to tell your story, Leave us a message on our website or any of our social media platforms so we can reach out to you and have you on the podcast. Until next time, peace out.